Well, hello everyone. Now a while ago I had a video and I was explaining to you about how a nonlinear load really messes up the power factor. So we saw how a rectifier and a capacitor hooked to the AC line really messed up the power factor because the output capacitor was only charged right when the sine wave, the AC line, peaked in voltage. And any other time, current wasn't flowing. So that makes all kinds of problems with noise, poor power factor, all manner of other problems. Now in that video I said a boost converter can be used to fix the power factor. But before we get into that, we need to understand a few basic things about the boost converter. So a boost converter is a pretty simple device actually. It's just a few components really. It's a transistor, MOSFET, IGBT, either kind. There's an inductor, a diode, output capacitor. The input just connects well to the input and the output connects to the load capacitor. So in principle, really, it's pretty simple. The transistor just connects the inductor to the power supply, a DC power supply, and the inductor charges up, and when the transistor switches off, the current's looking for a way out, right? So it goes through the diode and into the output capacitor, and then onto the load. But how do you control the output voltage? And this is key, because the power factor correction won't work unless we can precisely control the output voltage at all times. So the way the output voltage is determined, there's, there's a lot of different factors that go into it, but pr primarily in this video we're going to be focused on the pulse width, or the duration, how long the transistor and the circuit stays on. So an inductor's current profile, it looks something like this. It's, it doesn't just rise up to a peak immediately once it's connected to the power source. So once the transistor switches on, it takes some time to get the current built up. So when it first switches on, if we keep it on for not a very long time, a narrow pulse width, let's say 10% duty cycle, it builds up to this much current. Now if we turn it off there, the current doesn't build up anymore. Now if we do that, we use a low pulse width, 10% duty cycle, we'll only get a minimum output voltage. So I'm just going to make up an arbitrary number. Say we wanted a boost converter to go from 10 volts to 100 volts. Well, if we only used a 10% duty cycle, we probably wouldn't get there. We may only get 20 volts or 30 volts. So if we want the output voltage to be higher, we actually have to charge up the inductor more. And that means leaving the transistor on for a longer time. So the longer we have that inductor connected to the line, the more current it's going to build up, you know, to a certain extent. We couldn't go 100% pulse width, obviously. So what does this have to do with the power factor corrector? Well, when we look at the waveform of an AC, AC sine wave going through a rectifier, it gets turned into this. You know, it's not smooth DC, it's, it's lumpy. It's still going to zero volts when it's coming back up to a peak and then falling back down to zero. So the job of the boost converter is simple, to boost up voltage. So it needs to boost up the voltage to the same voltage no matter where that lumpy DC is. So if it's at zero volts, obviously we can't boost up zero volts because it's nothing. But anywhere through that lumpy DC, we need to boost the voltage up to the same level. So it's quite simple actually, in theory. We just need a device to measure the input voltage from the rectifier, right? Compare that and generate a pulse width. So, for example, if the sine wave is risen halfway, then we're going to need, it's still a fairly wide pulse, so we need a lot of voltage boost there. But once the sine wave reaches a peak, then the pulse gets narrow because we don't need as much boost there. Now, of course, some people are watching this and they're going to say, this is actually just going to make a lot of noise and it's going to inject a lot of noise onto the power grid and that's true. Because what's going to happen is, even though the sine wave is moving up and down, the transistor is pulsating and adjusting its pulse width many thousands of times inside the sine wave. Alright guys, so this is the circuit that I want to show you. This is uh, Linear Technologies 8312. This is a integrated circuit for a power factor correction boost converter. So as you can see here, Q1 is the boost transistor, L1 is the boost inductor, D2 is the output diode, C5 is the output capacitor, input rectifier, and remember like I was saying, all we really need to do is make a circuit that adjusts the pulse width 
with respect to the input voltage. So I've run the simulation here. As you can see, that's exactly what's happening. So when the rectified sign wave is at zero volts, that's when the pulse width is peaked. And when the rectified sine wave pulse peaks here, that's when the pulse width is at its lowest. All right, let me just zoom in here. So the green trace is the current through the inductor as here. So like I said, because of the way that the current moves through the inductor, it's not going to be perfect. There's still going to be the switching frequency superimposed on the grid. So it looks like this. So as you can see, the current isn't perfect. It's not a perfect half sign, but it's a heck of a lot better than having it just shoot up and then come back down and fall to nothing as soon as the voltage stops peaking. So again, here's the current. This, is, this would be the current measured from the grid. So yeah, the switching frequency is of the transistor is superimposed. So hey, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. And it possibly could be smoothed out. But that's exactly what's happening. The inductor is charging. And you can see it kind of ramp up and it falls down, ramp up and fall down, and it keeps repeating that over and over again. And so you get this kind of the envelope of a sine wave, if you will, but not exactly a perfect sine wave. So the current is going to look somewhat like this with a boost to power factor corrector. And again, like I said, at the zero crossing, well, you can't boost up zero voltage, so there's really nothing that you can do about it. So as you see, it's not really that complicated. Now you could probably build a circuit pretty easily using a comparator, a triangle wave generator, and then just hook the rectified sign through a resistor into the other input of the comparator. But if you are going to make a boost power factor corrector, I wouldn't suggest doing that, right? I'd suggest getting a proper IC, integrated circuit, that was specifically designed for that application. So you make sure you want to do it right. So. I hope you understood that. So it's, it's pretty, pretty basic. Like I said, if the input voltage is low, the pulse width is wide. And if the input voltage is high, then the pulse width is narrow. So really not that hard to understand. There won't, I won't be showing you anything today, anything that I built today, but next video we are going to make a boost converter. It's not going to be a power factor corrector, it's just going to be a boost converter. Because I did get a suggestion, somebody said that maybe I should start showing components and different things that are actually required to make some of these experiments and projects and whatever. So I, I do talk a lot about the IGBTs and how they work and how to use them, but whoever it was, they are right. I don't really talk about what's actually needed. So next video, I want to make a boost converter, show you all the components, how to put it together, make it work. So if you do have any questions or whatever, you can comment and email a message. And I do thank you guys for watching and for being patient, and I'll see you again soon.